It's Wednesday, and it's devotion time from St. Paul Lutheran Church in Westlake, Ohio, a congregation that is uh, reading the entire scriptures during the year 2021. We started in Genesis in January 1st, and we're going to end up in the middle of December at the end of Revelation. It's been an exciting journey, and we're halfway through, and we're here today at Jeremiah 14, 15, 16, and 17, four chapters in the wonderful prophecy from Jeremiah to the Old Testament people who had sinned greatly against God, who had forsaken the word that had been given to them uh, by their forefathers. And so Jeremiah is an interesting prophet. He's kind of stuck in the middle of his faithfulness to God to want to wanna save the people from their uh, sin and immorality and the people themselves who had already pretty much forgotten God. And so here he is uh, at the opening chapters of a wonderful book, uh, Prophecy of Jeremiah. And uh, today's lesson is really a, a, a little microcosm of the entire prophecy. In chapter 14, it really sets the stage for everything you kind of need to know. Uh, first of all, uh, the children of Israel were beset by a terrible drought. It's not the first one, but it's a serious one. And it could, in fact, kill the entire nation. And so uh, Jeremiah prays for the people. Now, God sent the drought as a way to get them to repent. But uh, Jeremiah prays that God would have compassion and send rain. huh? And, uh, and God says to him, you know, don't even bother praying for them. They're unrepentant. And in the meantime, some false prophets uh, waged war against the words of Jeremiah. And they said, people, you'll be okay. They, they sent some kind of message of, the future, you know, will be filled with peace and prosperity. And uh, it's kind of like, remember in Genesis, when, uh, when uh, God came after Adam and Eve after they sinned and said, what have you done? And uh, they said, well, uh, we have eaten from the tree that you told us not to. And God said, uh, didn't you hear me say in the day that you eat of it, you'll you're going to die? And the devil, the serpent, comes back at them and says, you're not going to die. Of course, under his breath, he said, right away. Well, that's kind of what the false prophets were saying. Uh, forget the danger of this drought. Uh, it's not going to kill you, you know. And God told Jeremiah, you go and tell the people that that message that the false prophets are giving you, uh, a message of, uh, of fantasy, hope, and prosperity, he, he, tell the people that I didn't send those false prophets. They're not from God. And so Jeremiah prays again fervently. And, and finally he says to God, for the sake of your name, you know, for the covenant that you gave, uh, don't let these people be, uh, be all killed by this drought. He prayed fervently and he prayed consistently. He prayed like that uh, woman in Luke 18 in the New Testament who just wore down the judge until he finally gave her his way. And yet, as we go on further into chapter 15 and 16, we see that God, God does not end this drought. He does not even want to hear the prayers of Jeremiah. So here, that's what I mean by Jeremiah being caught right in the middle. Caught between the impenitence of Judah, the people, and the judgment of God, holy God. What's a prophet to do? It gets him down. Maybe, maybe it gets you down sometimes, huh? When your prayers just don't seem to go the way of sinful humans, maybe even yourself. And they seem to align instead with the, with, with the false prophets of today. And you're kind of caught in the middle between that lousy message that comes from the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh, and the clear, holy message that comes from God. Do you ever feel caught in the middle? Well, I want you to know that God knows the situation you're in today. He knows the situation you're always in. He is an all-knowing God and an all-loving God. And even what he uses in terms of misery and suffering, he, he always uses it for your good. In the New Testament, in Romans, it says, all things work together for good to those who love his appearing. So rest on that, my friends. We have a faithful God. We have a holy God. We have a God that knows what's best for us. Live by faith in Jesus Christ, his son, 
your Savior. And you will find yourself in the end as victorious as Jeremiah was, faithful prophet of God. And uh, enjoy your reading of these four chapters today. Be with you. God bless.